go on, make some tea and pull out the crumpet. Oh yeah, baby. Put some marmalade on it and let's have a good old bash podcast episode, baby. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, cheerio, mate, to a very special British episode of the Mike Alex Show. I'm doing karate now. Pop, 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 pop. Listen to me, bro. If you want a weekly bonus episode, because of course you do. Look at this face. You want more of it. Yes. Patreon.com slash Mike Alec, baby. You pay whatever you want. One quid, five quid, ten quid, a million quid. If you pay a million quid, I'll sit in your lap and I'm going to do the podcast, bro. True story. You know what I'm saying? Also, leave us five-star review on all the social media platforms. And that's about it. Ladies and gentlemen, well, today, very unlike the British, I have my guest. Well, are you, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for my guest? My guest this week, Paul Campbell. And unlike the British, he's late, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, (laughs) Jacob, put down the clock because I'm getting distracted. We're going to fly solo for the first few minutes. So what we're going to do is, (laughs) because he got late, bro. He got distracted by the GPS, I think, or something. So he couldn't make it on time. But hey, Jacob, he's very efficient, bro. He's like a German, you know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, you need to start 8 o'clock. No, 7 o'clock, we finish at 8, right? He doesn't give me a minute no more because he doesn't love me anymore. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? That's why this intro is going to be 17 minutes long. (laughs) And Paul is going to run in midway, all like confused and sweaty because, you know, he's been, it's warm outside and he's been running, hustling and bustling. He's going to be like, what the fuck's happening, bro? I'm like, welcome to the mayhem zone. Yes, man, that's about it. So <laughs> we're recording, we don't give a fuck. Hey, listen, bro, I used to do this podcast two years by myself. You I was going to say, you, you should be used to this. Yeah, man, you think I'm scared, but I haven't done it uh, in a while, you know, because when we do the guests, it's quite easy for me now because yeah. I just throw a question and I sit back for three minutes and just don't say nothing, you know. <laughs> I quite enjoy it. But hey, listen, since we're talking, you know, Paul, because I was thinking like, let's do it that way because it's going to be a bit more different and, you know, just break up the stuff. And also, this is a warning for the comedians in the future. <laughs> don't be late, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't like it when people are late because, you know, we're paying money for this. So let's let's uh, do a bit of inside baseball. So we move in the studio. Jacob, uh, you know, the producer extraordinaire, he's moving the studio. It's going to be much bigger. Mm-hmm. I think he says it's going to kind of look the same. And I have a bit of announcement, even though I'm still working on it. But, so, we have one more episode, then maybe we're going to take like a week break or something. We'll see. We'll see how we feel, even though we have enough episodes scheduled for, you know, so we don't miss a week. Because, you know, this studio is going to be closed for a while. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming back with a vengeance, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm sick and tired of this shit. Let's cancel this fucking show. I just want to stay at home. Watch movies, bro. You know what I'm saying? Watch action movies from the 90s. I don't want to be in show business no more. So, it's going to be brand new brand new format. I'm not going to give out all the details because you have to tune in. Everything new, bro. Thumbnail is new. I'll get a boob job. You know what I'm saying? Everything, dude. We're out there slinging. We don't have real guns in the studio. We're going to be shooting. Bow, 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 bow. I'm going to buy one of those Nerf guns, you know, the big ones. And every time Jacob pisses me off, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> fill it with whiskey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nerf gun with whiskey. Fuck yeah. So this is what we're going to do. It's going to be new format. And it's going to be, I'm not going to give it out. It's very interesting. I'll tell to Jacob when the cameras are off. You know, obviously don't forget the Patreon. Obviously subscribe to the Patreon. And I think it's going to be fun, man. But it's going to be a little bit uh, controversial. So, you know, I'm saying it on camera now. Jacob, are you my ride or die bitch or what? Oh, yeah, baby. Yes, man. That's why I like you. You know what I mean? Because one day they'll come for me, bro. Because, like, they don't like when people are, like, free and happy. You know, that's what I've noticed. You know, the cancel mob. They they just don't like it when somebody's having too much fun. And I think we're having too much fun. Sometimes I I feel like, how the fuck is this legal? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, this is fun. You just talk shit. You know, you trash your guests when they're here or sometimes when they're not here, we still trash them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, Paul Campbell, we love you, baby. Well, come on, lad. Fucking 15 minutes and where are you? <laughs> you always gonna watch this. You know what? The thumbnail should be me in like an empty chair. <laughs> He's invisible now. You know what I'm saying? Paul Campbell is invisible. We need to Photoshop him in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's just sat there like this. Yeah, but should be like when from like he did like a Skype interview or whatever. So just yeah, like yeah, Skype yeah. Photoshop then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Fuck it hell. I don't even because I haven't even prepped with him what we're going to talk about because I usually go, you know, with the oh, guests yeah, and stuff because yeah, yeah. when they're here on time, we talk about for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, we're going to do a bit of spoiler alert. You know what I'm saying? Even though everything is improvised, we're very funny, very talented. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man. So anyway, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit controversial. 
but I think you'll be good, you know, because we need to get in that fucking algorithm, okay? Because, Jacob, are we doing, like, be honest with me. The, tell me as a friend, as a mate, not as a, you know, business fucking associate or whatever. Like, we work together, obviously. We sure. have a business relationship. Sure. Tell me honestly, you've seen 20, 20, 21 episodes so far. Do you think we're doing a good job? I have to say yes, don't I? Mm? <laughs> Sorry? I have to say yes. I'm joking. It's funny, isn't it? I'm joking. I, I love it, man. It's a favorite part of my week. Nice man, yes lad. You're not gonna get a raise because I'm poor, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. You know the thing, because like I think we're doing a good job. You know, I think we're funny. I think we strive to go for the joke mm -hmm. every like few seconds to be something. I learn how to do the interviews because the first three or four episodes are just me talking and just a guy in the corner. That was the show. You know what I'm saying? But I learn how to interview people. And it's the consistency as well, you oh, know. You, Eastern you, European. Yeah, wouldn't... you're probably the most consistent podcast out there. Really? Mm. I mean, no, let's put it that way. Most consistent podcast that doesn't make any money. Yeah. Okay? Because, exactly. I mean, come on, if it's like Joe Rogan or whatever, like the guy's making millions and billions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can but yeah, title. for a guy who has like fucking 100 subscribers. Oh, oh, we got a buzz, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, <laughs> oh Jacob, pick up the phone. Let's fucking go, Paul Campbell. Let's fucking go, Paul Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going to arrive in a few seconds. We're going to give him a standing ovation when he's here. <laughs> he wouldn't know what the fuck hit him. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. So a few weeks from now, it's going to be a brand new format. And I'm looking forward to it. And subscribe to the channel. And let's fucking go. And I think he's almost here, ladies and gentlemen. I give you yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Paul Campbell, baby. Yeah. Woo. Yes, lad. Come on. We already... Like 20 minutes. Like early. We're recording. Come on, lad. Right. Yes, go. lad. Let's go. Let's go, Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, he threw the jersey. I love it, dude. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, lad. Jacob, whenever you're ready. Oh, you're going to see. Are, you, are, are they going to see you? Are we recording already? Oh, yeah, man. Oh. <laughs> I told you it started at seven. <laughs> That's good though, so we don't feel too, at least you've got a show. Yeah. Oh, I And it adds to the excitement, because I feel this is more an authentic me experience. That's the Paul Campbell experience. <laughs> it That's is what you said. Yeah, because it reflects your character on stage. I mean, you say character on stage, it reflects me. My character on stage <laughs> sort of reflects, it's like a more sophisticated version of me. <laughs> That's a sophisticated persona. version yeah, yeah, of your yeah. stage <laughs> Do you want me to introduce you properly then? I or feel just like I've already over? introduced myself, but you can do if you want to. <laughs> I already introduced your thing three times so far. What? Yeah, well, because I was like, Paul Campbell, boom, and you're not there. And then when we heard I you, like... I thought you just freestyle. Oh, right. So you, you introduced me once in case it never showed up. You didn't show up, no. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it was here. Like, it's man, I must have gone past the street about four times. Really? But none of the people who gave me directions. And like my, like, directed me to here apart from one person, like at the end, and... I am. Um, what well, it was, I got directed to a gate and I was thinking, is this part of the fun? Am I meant to climb over the gate? Is this a test? <laughs> I is know this is Liverpool, but like fucking hell. <laughs> I know, I thought it was like you had set that shit up. <laughs> you gave me the wrong address and like, yeah, you've got to climb this gate. <laughs> like, I do I pass the test or not? British version of Squid Game, just like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's why I, I'm always, oh. just, you know, I, I've got an open mind to that. I'm like, this could, this could be the moment. Can I've... you imagine? And I'm filming it with like spy cameras and shit. And this is the podcast. It's you just completing tasks in order to get here. And that's like, you come here and it's like two minutes left and that's it. And the whole podcast is you with those spy cameras just and like trying to navigate. By the way, if navigate. I had genuine tasks to complete, there's no way I'd be here with two minutes left. <laughs> like you just would not see me apart yeah, probably yeah. the news. I'm just going to draw a picture of how news. you look like. And you distance yourself after I die. You'd be like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You'd yes, be deleting man. your messages. It was said, worth the wait, okay? It was okay, worth the wait, you. Paul Campbell. We love Thanks. you, man. How you doing, baby? I like What's how up? you put, you seem to put a lot of effort into it in a good way in your appearance. Yeah, man. Whereas... I'm like an extreme contrast to you. <laughs> like, I look grim anyway, but this is like me looking even, like even below my normal stand. It makes me look handsome in my ordinary state. <laughs> you put zero effort, bro. I put that like, hard effort. How do you know? I was gonna be here ten minutes early. I was gonna, I was gonna put my jumper on, but I can't now. He's like, I don't use hair gel. I just sweat. You know, just fucking sweat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is my sweat. Yeah, <laughs> and a bald in person does not want to be on camera sweating. It's not good. It's yeah. not good for the hairline. Mm, but yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I, I'm off. I'll, I'll show you the real me. This yeah, is, that's what I want to hear, bro. Away from the glamour. <laughs> away, from, away from the glitz and glamour. Because I've only seen you on gigs. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I like to have a lot of comedians here. You know, like people that. Because we never like hang, I mean, obviously a 
around gigs. We never hang out around that world. So I just want to get to know you. You know, that's okay. why you're here. Fine. Plus, I think you're a brilliant comedian as well. Thank you. I mean, you're never on time, but he's a brilliant comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, if he arrives to the gig, he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think I am. I think, you know, I'm on time for any promoters. I am on time, <laughs> but it's like normally a struggle. I need to leave like an hour early. Yeah. Then plan, and then I'll get there just on on the request. He's like, "Hey, Jerome, you're in for your next time." Paul Campbell just opens the door to the venue. Ah, oh, there he is, just like just fucking sprints to the stage. But on a train strike day, there's no chance that oh, yeah. it would be that yeah, smooth, yeah, though. Yeah, because there is a train from my house to roundabout here, but it was it just wasn't happening. Today, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, because like he is moving the studio. That's what we're talking about before he came, and he's gonna close the studio for about two weeks. Okay, and I needed to schedule a bunch. I'm doing three podcasts this week. All that's right, the only week otherwise i'll lose no, no, it's fine it's fine and to be fair you know? it's added to the experience yeah yeah yeah. that's why i texted you like there's a strike just have a look just in case you know like. yeah but me i did have a look did but you? Yeah. yeah 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 but it was unpredictable the train the train times keep changing and i like i like how now after the drama we come and we've got to slow the energy down yeah. by discussing train admin. yeah 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 well that's very british you know what i'm saying because all me all me guests they've been british so far it's a very british you know like i i spike it up you know like an american comedian just let's go high energy and then the british comes down let's relax <laughs> come down. Hold on. You know, let's have some tea sit down we had ryan kenny the whole time i tried to spike you know, he was just no, like... he would... He I would like it. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I like Ryan. I was like Bitcoin, like you know that. what I'm saying? I go up, <laughs> he just like, no, 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 let's come down. Let's go to the red, relax, where you going, you know? So, <laughs> so how you been, man? I haven't seen you in ages. How you been? How you doing? The only thing is we don't talk about gigs and stand-up comedy because all my guests are stand-up comedians and then, you know, it's going that's, to be the same. I, That's fine. I'm quite happy not to talk about stand Um I've been fine. Yeah. Um, what have I been doing recently? Well... I don't know. I'm very. I've been. I've been on a lot of Facebook groups. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm my um my new passion in life, right, is just staying in. Like I feel like lockdown was perfect for me. I miss lockdown because I like. I like the idea. I love staying in all the time, but I loved lockdown because it was kind of like. I wasn't on my own. You know what I mean? Everybody else was staying in, so, so I didn't good. feel... You're so I was like, yeah. oh, I could be cool now. You're not missing out, innit? Yeah, now yeah, I want to do the whole lockdown, but in my head I'm like, no, other people are... <laughs> Other people have a life now. Yeah. But I'm still one of like just I like staying inside and watching the drama channel. Cause when everybody's outside, you feel like if I stay here, I'm missing out on the world. Yeah, I feel like and a loser. People, yeah, and yeah, Facebook yeah, exactly. store, Insta story, everybody has like pictures of just them in in air, like yeah, outside yeah. in daylight. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know, I, I don't my Insta pictures are normally just of like screenshots of internet um comment sections. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Sometimes. Well, I've that's <laughs> another thing, like I've been watching a lot. I like watching old comedians on YouTube. Okay. Like, um, my, most of my heroes are, like, quite older comedians. And that's another thing I've gotten into, like... Um, right, I found this, and I don't know why. You get these people who put up videos of old comedians, right? Like, I don't... No one will know who this is, but Larry Grayson, who was massive, like, 40 years ago. Right. And he... <laughs> I don't know what that is. I, I think you should research. You'd love him. Okay. Probably. And he... Right, anyway... I find like videos, they describe these comedians and they're always like slightly inaccurate. Mm. So I like go on to the car. I like, this is like the highlight of my day. I if saying. I read like the description of the video and they talk about a comedian, there's a slightly, a slight factual inaccuracy. I like comment underneath and like <laughs> correct them. <laughs> You're like Wikipedia. Yes. Like, just Wait, see, it makes my job easy though. <laughs> And it makes me feel good. That's what I do for self-esteem. Oh, really? Yeah, really? Self -esteem. yeah, I feel good. And like sometimes when they're arsy and they're like, oh no, um, who cares? That's annoying. Mm. But sometimes but when sometimes they're like, thank you, I've changed it yeah. now. And it, yeah, yeah. it makes me feel good. And you know, everyone's gotta have a purpose. And if they if they gave you like a thumb, thumbs up or like a little heart on your comment, that must be like jizzing in your pants. You're just like, that's the best shit ever, innit? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't get <laughs> that excited. It would <laughs> <laughs> I treat myself with a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a poor Campo answer, by the way. Um, just celebrate, nah, 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 just bask just in the glory, <laughs> bask in the glory. I wouldn't go that far, though. <laughs> you don't get aroused by words. That's what he's no, saying. No, and huh? also like it would be all like the cleaning up and all that sort of thing, just based. <laughs> Because my dream would be this, this, like these comments would be getting corrected and appreciated mm, like mm. every two minutes, mm. and that just wouldn't be logistical if I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. there's gonna be a lot a, of cum, a mess. Yeah, yeah there's gonna be a lot of cleaning. That's up. why you wouldn't you wouldn't be cut out for this <laughs> if you were getting that excited. <laughs> I get excited for everything, bro. I got excited when you came here, you know. 
Thank just you. like, yes, mom. Good, mom. That's good. So you said that you watch, what did you say you watch throughout the, what type of telly you watch? Because you stay inside the house or you just internet stuff? A variety of things. Okay. Um, I like a lot of old television. This is my problem, I think, in life in general. I love, like, the 90s and 80s and mm. 70s telly. And I love 90s Coronation Street is my particular, one okay. of my great passions okay. in life. Um, and I watch, like, classic Coronation Street on ITV3 and a lot, like, just old, do you know much about Coronation Street? I've heard the name, but what is it? You've heard, uh, right. I don't watch telly, I don't have television. It's a, it's a television program, but in many ways it's like, it's technically it's British culture, essentially. Oh, okay. Um, it's, a, it's a soap. Okay. Soap okay. opera, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. people will know. And it's basically the greatest soap opera ever written. One of the, it's a piece really? of art. Most soap opera operas, they just bang about five out a week and it's just written and act, it's variable. Some actors are good, some actors are bad. But I think Coronation Street is the only like existing quality soap. Okay. Uh, and it's still, sometimes it's a bit dodgy, but basically... It started, it was in 1960, um, December the 11th, I think, right, 1960. Jesus, man, that's Bro, you need to get out, bro. He knows the, <laughs> he needs, he knows the date. I mean, and I feel, you know what's sad, though? I might actually be wrong. It might be the 10th, but, you know, like, that is like to, I've only just scratched the surface no, dude, of on. this. <laughs> you need some social life, okay, you, might, you say I need to get out. This is what happens when I get out, right? I can't find <laughs> anywhere. But, but I was running up and down and I was saying to me, I'm not going anywhere. I was literally saying I'm giving up stand-up. I'm never doing anything ever again. <laughs> I was stressing out, walking into railings, having people like, oh, you can find Jordan Street. And I'm like, no, I can't. That's the point. It has like massive letters on the top as well. So 12 but Jordan there was Street. a guy with a dog and he looked to his dog and said, yeah, yeah, Jordan <laughs> Street, as if the dog was meant to know. It's Liverpool, lad. You never know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was, it was, it was a, tr well, not a traumatic experience, but I was like, no, I'm staying in all the time. And you know what? I want to know more. That, knowing the first episode of Coronation Street isn't really, yeah. Um, Go on, tell me then. Tell me, tell me about Coronation Street. Because like, I, I, zero information. What is it? Tell me the characters, what is the plot, what's happening? I mean, it's the plot. It's quite a long plot. Is it? Well, it's been on, um, yeah. it's been on 60 years. So it, it's Jesus. not like, I, I don't feel realistically, it can't be like when you've got like a narrative, like Breaking Bad or we'll do this for season five or season six. No one's planned it out to this, but it's gone way beyond what anyone expected. We're on season 60 at best. Like we, at my, well, they never have. We're on series one of Corey technically, but it's 60. So years. we have 23 minutes left. Do you think you managed to squeeze in 60 years of television in 23 23? Oh my God, it's gone quick this. Oh yeah, because you've been late for 15, you can't find me. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm taking the piss, mate. Okay, that's what I do. <laughs> no, that's tell me, fine. tell me. So, <laughs> is, is it like the Latin American soap operas where everybody has the tits out and it's all about love affairs no, and no. drinks and smacking each other in the face? Well, it's none of that? Some people would say that. Really? But they, they wouldn't know anything, okay, about life. So, basically, it's... It started off, a guy called Tony Warren, he was 23, he wrote the pilot script and it's one of the best half hours of television ever, this pilot script, the okay. first episode. Okay. It creates like characters who are still, they're very much of the time, like Manchester 1950s essentially, but now they're still like relatable, they were so well written and it was acting, it's like the perfect episode of television, the first ever episode of Coronation Street. And it's still, like, that was so good. And it's still, if you watch it now, it's still got, so, it was so funny. No soap opera was ever really properly funny before. Mm. It was, it had did all that drama of affairs and people slapping each other. But it was, it was just written in such a sophisticated, funny manner. And it's like, um, I think still, you don't always get it every episode, but you've still got, like, that DNA of, like, beauty in it. And it, I do think it's such a good episode, but, like, sorry, it's such a good... Um, show. Set show, yeah. yeah. And I kind of... But all, but because when I was a kid, like, I used to love it when I was a kid. Like, my first... This is weird, right? But my first memory, right? Mm. My first childhood memory is of an episode of Coronation... A moment in Coronation Street, right? Fucking hell, this guy works for the show, Jacob. Like, sadly, do do don't... don't I don't work for the show, sadly. You know, that's my dream. <laughs> the, no, of, come on. <laughs> no, it is. I'd love to write for Coronation Street. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it there's, up. There's been 10,666 episodes. No, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, wow, look at him. I mean, that. <laughs> did oh. you have to Google that? I did. Have to. Yes, right. he's not okay, like you, right. mate. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't look at a wall and recite Coronation Street facts. You know what I'm saying? Like he doesn't do that for a living. Because <laughs> that's him. He's not getting it. He just said, found my one new, f- my one true friend. <laughs> it's not to be. It's not to be. <laughs> Google cheat. <laughs> is anybody from your mates into Coronation Street as much as you are? Or you're the no, only person in No, like- but, well, this is the mad thing, right? Mm. I know because everybody thinks I'm like a Coronation Street expert, right? And thinks like I'm a mega fan. But the truth is I'm not because if you go on Facebook forums, you will oh. see them. You will see. I'm like nothing compared to some of these people. But in a ma- like, I'm so jealous of a lot of them, though. <laughs> and... Right, what happened is during lockdown, the only successful thing I ever Fucking did. What are we doing here, Chico? What's happening? I love this shot. I love this. <laughs> but pull, like, pull up the fucking characters, at least. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I'll tell you some of the characters. Do you want to tell you some of the characters? Tell me, yeah. I yeah. mean, the, right, the only one character who has lasted the distance, uh, who started in 1960. Jesus. And he's still now, and he's called Ken Barlow. Okay. I feel, the thing is, I feel a lot of people watching will know all about, oh, I'm loving like he's Googling Coronation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken Fantastic. Barlow. Ken Barlow, played by Bill Roach. Um, it's his 90th birthday um, in April. It was his 90th birthday in April. And 90th, I heard 1919, and I was like, that's fucking... 90... Wow, 90. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Wild. In, in, in... But anyway, he was... Um, yeah, basically he started, he kind of played, he started off as like in the 1960s, like a progressive student guy. He's meant to be like quite highbrow. Yeah. And then he was, basically they made him like unassuming like playboy, basically. Mm. In the 60s and 70s, he had loads of affairs and uh, he was like a teacher. He was a teacher at Weatherfield uh and oh, what else? There was something. What did he do? He was a journalist as well uh, for the Weatherfield Gazette. And he had, I was got a car. Basically, I was going to tell you some obscure fact, but I can't remember it. But anyway, basically, <laughs> he had some emotional. One of his um, wives died um, putting in um, a plug on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, was very, that was very that. tragic. That was but it. It, was, it was such a like night. Oh, you see, I feel like sounds exposed. like Monty Python. You know, <gasps> you just like fucking just put a plug and somebody just fucking died. <laughs> Please don't mock the great, <laughs> Eric, the great job. It's not Monty Python. I would say it's funnier, and more sophisticated in many some ways than Monty Python. He got so pissed off, Jacob. It's hilarious. Like, oh, hey, lad, like we're crossing no, the line. Like, you I, know what I'm saying? Like, come on, you're crossing the line here, yeah, lad. What is this? Right in the nineties, right in what my point. Right in the night, like the early nineties, right? It was like a campaign about yeah. how you don't put remotes down the side of sofas because it'll like explode, it'll go on what? fire. It was very nineteen nineties. I don't even know if that's true, but in that, it alerted people to that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the like seventies equivalent of that is saying don't put plug in a hairdryer if you've just been in a shower. And so ah. Coronation Street were kind of raising awareness. That you don't, if you've just had a shower, you don't go plugging stuff in. So when was that episode aired? Uh, with I plug, feel it was like, New Year's Eve and I don't actually know. You have the, to the, know the date. Come on, love. Uh, I mean, come on. This is yeah, your... Like, this, is, this is what I mean, though. I've got so much passion for it, but I don't remember. These people on the internet would know it more than me. If you though. want to become a writer for Coronation Street one day, this is your audition. You know people are watching this from Coronation Street. We made a we made a few phone calls and they're watching like let's see if he knows enough to be on the show as a writer and you are dropping the ball, mate. Yeah, but to be fair, this- you gotta know the dates, Paul Campbell. Okay, you've made me, you've shamed me now. I did. You said, what's mad is that you were more relaxed about me being late than you, <laughs> than you were over me not knowing, not knowing uh, the death. And the actress, uh, the actress you play. <laughs> I absolutely love the actress who plays. Okay. Oh my god, my brain's gone. It's because I've been rushing. Can I Google a little no, bit? No, cheats. No, oh. no, no. We gotta see you sweat, baby. This is fa- <laughs> right. It's unre- my fa- one of my favorite actors has been in. you not. You probably won't know all this, but she's I, been in a great show. My fa- one of my fa- probably my second favorite show, Dinner Ladies. <laughs> Bro, what is happening here? I don't. I have zero idea about the stuff you talk about. Oh, right that now. that was a work of art. Like, like sort of moved on from Coronation Street in terms of like sophisticated dialogue and humor. It was just, it was a sitcom. From have you heard of Victoria Wood? No, no. She's is a, she fit? No, she was. Uh, well. 
it's weird thinking of her in that regard. Pull to be up honest a picture. With you. No, no, no. Can we not do that to Victoria? Right, well, basically, she was the mo- one of the greatest British comedians ever, right? And she died tragically a few years ago. Really? So oh, I feel. Shit. Can we not analyze okay. her in that way, please? Because oh, I have like, no idea. I don't even think it's me who'd think that was odd. But like, um, but she was lovely. Mm. Do, do, she was she was a very very talented woman. Okay. I'm I'm foreigner. Great... I don't know any better. I don't know the reference. I'm sorry. I feel country. like this might not have the banter ratio you were hoping. <laughs> you you might have been hoping for. I love it. Because like you know, it's I don't watch telly, so I I know so because le- I grew up with American pop culture, so I know shit loads of American stuff, especially about pop culture and yeah, sports yeah, yeah. and stuff. But like I've never, we never. The only thing we had in Bulgaria when I was growing up British was Ben Hill. Forty Towers and Mr. Bean. That's the only three things we right. analogy later on. That's the only four things right. we have. I don't know anything else about British pop culture. I just don't follow it. I don't have telly. I don't I just watch American shit. You know? So that's why when you say the name of this lady, I have no idea who that is. Oh interesting. Uh, yeah, I just don't follow. Like I know like from the British comedians like Ricky Gervais and Jimmy Carr, but like the I know like the biggest names, but I just don't follow. I don't know. I just no, fair enough. <laughs> I think Victoria Wood was bigger in like the night, the eighties. Oh, and not, 90s. not a chance. Not a chance. Yeah, that's what I mean. Where she kind of like had like legendary status mm. throughout like the two thousands, but she wasn't really that active, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, Probably wouldn't like you wouldn't realistically. Yeah, you wouldn't really have seen much any yeah. of the stuff. Because the thing for me is, I like high energy, and I like like ah, you know, like that show tunes type of stuff, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, it's glittery. Ah. Yeah, and that's yeah. the American, you know, sense of humor. It's very, like, loud and, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Ah. and I like that. You know, I gravitate towards that. Well, the British is super clever, but it's a bit like, you know, like, you got to listen, you got to think. I don't okay. like to think, you know, okay. I just want to somebody to jump up and down and make faces. That's why I like Jim Carrey. Jim Car- I love Jim Carrey. Like you just Jim do Carrey. the faces and like, ah, that's easy, you know. But then when you watch something British, which is super clever, I have to sit there and be like, Hmm, you know, like I have to think and I have to get the reference. I like simple stuff, bro. You know, that's why I like the American stuff so much. Bro, very yeah. Good. Yeah, Even yeah, though yeah, the British, good. I think the British comedy is like, especially now and like the heritage of British comedy and entertainment is the catalog for such a small country compared to America. Yeah. It's fucking wild. Like the stuff that, that, you know, you have here. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Oh, have you seen the show? Talking about old shows, uh, Mind Your Language. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, dude, that show is hilarious, man. It's right. So I love that show. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I, like, I, I watched did. it. I remember watching it on holiday when I was a kid because they had it. It was obviously it was in like British made, but like the only time I saw it when I was younger was when I was like on holiday, I think oh, in really? Cyprus. Oh wow! I remember like watching it, thinking, "Oh, this is a straight." Like it's odd that I'd never seen it, but then, yeah. like. One of my friend's housemates, um, like, discovered that show. And I remember they, like, you know, it was one of those moments where they've got, like, a video. And they're like, will yeah. you watch this? Mm-hmm. Just look at this. And I was like, oh, man, your language, right? She held out a phone for, like, a whole episode. Really? And it was politely, didn't know what to do. I was like, this is the whole episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, eh. And then I... It's all right, but like, I don't... I mean, modern day... No, obviously, yeah, for modern day, But that's day, it, you know. and then they were saying all like these racial stereotypes, yeah, yeah, yeah. which, I don't know, I think it's a bit... Yeah, I mean, obviously, listen, it was the 70s. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They fly. But she was like, every time there was like a racial stereotype, she was like, that is so true, that's so true. <laughs> I was like, it was like such an awkward 23 minutes. Yeah. I watched it with uh, Indian mate, Chinese girl, and a guy, I think, from Sweden or Finland or something, yeah. and me, a Bulgarian, we pissed us. I was laughing. Okay. But our British flatmates, they were appalled. They were all like in uni it's and grim. stuff. They were like, oh my God, what are I you doing? I know it's great. Like, I, like, I, I struggle to watch it. It's it like, like, I, my cousin sounds like that. It was literally like, just like dying yeah. laughing. <laughs> but you know, what other, what other shows do you gravitate towards though? Is there something modern show? Do you like like Love Island or like those very well, trendy ones? It's a modern show. I mean, it's been going since the 60s. Yeah, but it's still but... on now, though. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not like yeah. Mind Your Language. But what do we watch? Yeah, I do watch modern shows. Um, the news. Um, uh, uh, you can't you get any more up to date. Did you say the news? Did you say the news? <laughs> um, i trying to think. Like, I, I, like um, what have I... Yes, the, but my brain's um, my brain's not working too well. What do How about, about, like, Love Island? What do you no, think about No, I don't... Well... You don't like that type of I show? I went through a period of watching Love Island, but it wasn't... It was kind of fun for a little because I like it reminded me of Big Brother, right, from 20 years ago. And I liked the first Big Brother. Mm. Did you ever watch Big Brother? 
Yeah, yeah, we used to cover them Bulgaria. The back British in the day. Big Brother. Br- no, no. <laughs> okay, but I loved it. It was when Big Brother was a bit more like authentic, and there was like real characters in that. You because like I feel now it's just people who caught. Well, it was Big Brother and a lot of these shows that just kind of come to get famous and they're all about showing off or whatever. Whereas they just felt like real car- real people in like 20 years ago. And I loved that. And it felt like you could watch it and like you could go to bed, right? And think, oh, they're in bed now. And you felt like part of the mm. house somehow. And when I watched Love Island, it, I felt a bit like that. But then I don't know that I've, I've not watched it since really. It, it got, I think it got too big. Yeah. Got too big. Yeah, yeah. Very mainstream as well. Yeah, and I think like I think they made it too because I think maybe it was the second series I watched, but after that, I think they made it too like it felt a bit cruel and a bit like they've done it trying to set. I don't know. Like I, I do enjoy it when I watch it. I've just not really watched it that mm. often. It's because I was living my sister was living with us at the time, and that's why I watched it. it was my mum hates anything like that. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. type of shows she likes them? Coronation Street. <laughs> Everything goes back. <laughs> Forget it. Like, this episode is called Coronation Street, lad. That's it. Everything goes back to Coronation Street, you know? I love it, man. Fuck but it like, up. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, at the moment, I've spent a lot of time, like, looking at Coronation Street group, Facebook fan We need groups. to post this episode when it comes out to those groups, you know? Right. They will love it. Well, this is it, right? I, I'm not showing off here, guys, right? But... I, I do run my own Facebook Coronation group. Street. No, um, come on. The Coronation <laughs> Street Classic Clip Discussion Group. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's mad, right? It's like I'm mad. <laughs> it's been like a love affair, right? But okay. I've kind oh, of been I can tell. I can tell. Well, I've been heartbroken, right? I started it in August 2020. Oh, really? Well, so it was during watching... lockdown. Oh, I but I needed watching... five months to oh. like in my head plan out how it was going to be right oh, okay okay so i started it in august 2020 and my my plan was that it was going to be this amazing group where everyone would like put up epi- like the favorite like clips of coronation street and then everyone else like maybe about 30 40 people right would join in the discussion okay. like analyzing yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah. like analyzing the dialogue looking at it from like a cultural point of, of view course, and like comparing it that didn't happen, though. <laughs> I did one and someone went, I'd put one clip and someone was like, oh, that was funny. But that's like the most I've ever got oh, wow. to it realizing midweek. Now I feel like I'm an absolute sellout, right? Because what I have to do is just to get people interested. I've just got to like do, like post um, a link from like a Metro article about <laughs> Gail's jumper or something like that. Uh, uh, and I just uh, feel like such a sellout. And every mm. time I do it, like it makes me slightly dislike myself. Yeah. How many people do you have in that group? Well, I liked it, 410. Wow, that's good, man. No, but it's gone because Facebook has ruined it, right? It was about 300. Well, it started off with 100, and there was lots of people that you'd probably know who were, like, joining in and contributing, and then it got bigger and bigger, and, you know, the fame went to it. It went to it, and it got too big. It was, um, but no, it was too much. It was too much, and then Facebook changed the rules, so I don't know how to change the settings so anyone can join. And it just was people who were A public group then, yeah. Yeah, it's probably... Yeah, people just didn't have the sense of humour, and it was... And there was, like, this weird thing that happened, right? There was like a rival Facebook group and there was like a really emotional thing that happened. <laughs> tell me, come on. Well, Did I offend you now? Come on, Bob, no, come on tell me. I don't, That's so I funny, feel, dude. I feel bad talking about it though because I don't want to... <laughs> look, this is a scary world. You don't know what the Coronation Street fan group is. You don't know what you're getting into asking me. Fuck it, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to disappear in a few days, you know what I'm saying? Oh, where's yeah, my no, camera? I'm going to leave names out just to protect you. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You don't deserve this, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Listen, I, I grew up in Eastern Europe, tough times during the 90s, the mafia and shit, yeah. but I'm not ready for the Coronation Street gang. You know what I'm saying? Fucking hell, man. Go you're on, right. Go. No, 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 it's for your own protection. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like, okay. yeah because you wouldn't believe it, right? So th- things have gone down, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, for instance, I, I, um, I shared a, cli- a few clips of somebody else's Coronation Street fan group there because oh, they have some classic dude. Corrie clips and somebody from my group alerted oh, the, the person snitch. who ran the other group. And yeah, snitch, like there was a spy in the camp and that kind of, I, I lost heart in the whole thing partly mm, after, mm. for a while after that. I thought, oh no, you can't trust anyone these days. Um, <laughs> and this person was like, oh, so you've been sharing my stuff then? Okay. And then it was weird, right? You know, like, I'm trying to think of it. They have it a lot on reality TV shows. You know where they have, like, two people who are rivals, Mm -hmm. but they have to, like, be civilized? Yeah. 
and like pretend to be yeah, friends. Yeah, 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 it was weird because I thought this person's not, I don't want him to be, but he's my rival. Mm -hmm. And I tried to have like this civilized conversation about our favorite characters whilst there was like this undertone of, oh, mm. we can't trust each other. Mm -hmm. And so right, I was messaging and this is where I got so jealous, right? I was like trying to show off a bit. I was like, oh, my favorite era is the 90s with like, this will mean nothing to you, but like, no, Terry, I love Terry this. Duckworth. Like one of my favorite clips is Terry Duckworth's, um, well, my first chat, it was Terry Duckworth um, running away from prison on his wedding day. It was such, <laughs> you'll love it. <laughs> Say that again, what? Right. Well, there's a character, <laughs> the there's fuck? a couple, oh my the God. greatest couple who ever existed, even though the fictional Jack and Vera Duckworth, oh my God. they had oh. a son yeah. from the wrong side of the track. Well, he was from them, but somehow he wasn't there. He was no son of theirs. He was mm. a bad man. And he went to prison in the early 90s and he got married but he kept, they let him out of prison to get married and they were having the picture taken. He was marrying Lisa. And they he was like to the policeman, oh, can you just take the handcuffs for this picture, please? And the policeman was like, okay, well, we can do that. And then at that moment, he just like runs bolts for it. And it's, it's so dramatic. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I was in the conversation with this guy. And also I mentioned, we're going to run out of time probably because I don't know, but... We've done 40 minutes. 40 minutes. So we've got like four minutes yeah, to, for me to get through. Yeah, and one minute for plugs, so you have two minutes. Okay. Go on. I think I've already plugged all I want to, by the way. <laughs> you plug Coronation Street, that's <laughs> Classic <all>. clip. <laughs> classic <laughs> clip discussion group. That does, Coronation Street doesn't need me to plug it, but the <laughs> classic clip discussion group needs me. Only if you're really interested, right? Finish the story and then do the plugs, bro. Okay, like, do it. all right, fair enough. All right, that'll be, yeah, that's a better order. That's right, so well, yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, so, <laughs> and also one of my other things that I mentioned was my first childhood memory, right? Yeah. This sounds weird, but it was glorious, right? So... My first childhood memory is from 1980. It's February 1989, I think, if I remember correctly, right? The character of Brian Tilsley, who was married to Gail, who is still in it, who's a legendary character. Um, he he, right? He got stabbed, right? But it was such an over-the-top, dramatic kind of clip. It was so basically beat up four guys who were twice his size, Jesus, um, and then they just stabbed him. Which it was so kind of like. It was like, a, to me as a four-year-old, it was like the greatest action film ever. But as an adult, it doesn't look. Jeez. I like how you're reacting to it as if it's a real life tragedy, but- No, but like, <laughs> you were four, bro. You're not supposed to watch stuff but, like no, that. No, but I was, it was Coronation Street though. But, so it's fine. And they did do it in like quite a silly way. So anyway, right. He, he got stabbed, but somehow I just thought that was like a- Oh, that was silly and funny. But when the woman got electrocuted with the plug, oh no, no, Mike, how can you laugh? That was a tragedy. Yeah, because but you were getting stabbed is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> You know, sometimes if you're a Cory fan, it feels like other people, you can take the mick out of it, but other people, ah, God, it's like sorry. family sometimes. Ah, no, but to be fair though, if you saw the plug, you'd have felt that though. Uh, yeah. you'd have, but the problem is that the actor who played Brian Tilsley, he's, oh, I don't know. He's a bit of a, he's viewed not in a great light though. He's 60 and he's married to like a 20 year old. <laughs> Like that's, that's disappointing that's me. That's definitely up Coronation Street style. You know what I'm saying? Like a pensioner fucking, oh my God. All right. Yeah, hey. there was a Channel 5 documentary about okay, him okay, recently. Okay. Jesus, really? But anyway, do you want me to finish? Shall fin I quickly yeah, finish, finish the yeah, story yeah, finish about yeah. the... Um, yeah, of course. Because we've got two and a half minutes. So, um, <laughs> where are we on now? Um, yeah, well, what happened was, I'm going to have to leave some bits out because I don't want to, for our own safety, right? So it might not have a good ending, but you know. Just stay on the fucking story, Because otherwise the ending will be us dying. So, <laughs> Just stay on the fucking okay, story. I'm telling the story. Please, this is, this is a big moment for me to, to talk about like this really like problematic <laughs> moment where I was arguing with people in, it, lock, in lockdown. Tell right. the fucking story, guy. Okay. Tell the story. I'm melting. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm melting, bro. Tell okay. the story, please. I want to go home. <laughs> Come on, tell the story. Okay, so what happened is this guy, I was chatting to him and I was telling him about all my, I'm going to have to speak really quickly, all about my favorite <laughs> clips. And he was like, oh yeah, like he, he didn't even Google this because he replied straight away. Every time, every clip I said was my favorite. He dated it. He was like, oh, he did it off the top of his head. And it was, I was like, I was so jealous, right? And I was a part of a Facebook group chat at the mm -hmm. time, right? And so I... Like, I shouldn't have done this, but I was so jealous. I was like, oh, is this guy showing off to me, right? And then somebody <laughs> added, oh, this good. guy is a friend and added him to the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. 
and he saw that I wasn't being nice to him. Yeah. Like, I wasn't I mean, horrible. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, oh, and it was quite dramatic, um, like a Coronation Street episode, <laughs> but on. But anyway, it wasn't that there's other things that go on. Like people have messaged me saying, like having a go at my group. Uh. <laughs> and saying it's rubbish and that it's stupid and pure oh, yeah. oil. And oh, it's just so good. Like, there's been a lot of incidents, though, of people, like, there's been a lot of trolls on the group. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Campbell. Take so much of you. Plug in it to you all. Plug Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> now we got like, have 20 more minutes for the Patreon. Come on. Plug anything you want to plug in that camera. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what to plug, really. I'm called Paul Campbell. <laughs> Paul Campbell Comedy. Probably, like, my page. Um, I'm money is to put... There's no point following me there because it's nothing really... Like, I don't know, you can do if, um Paul Campbell, I'm on there with Paul, under the name Paul Campbell. Um, uh, and Faith <laughs> Coronation Street Classic Clip Discussion Group. <laughs> See, only, can I just say, only if you really want to discuss clips. If you want to troll, don't do it. If you want to just like, right, there's a person on there who's like putting up links to T-shirt, like factually inaccurate T-shirts about Coronation Street, right? <laughs> so put like the 60th anniversary of Coronation Street 2022. That is bollocks, right? It was 2020. Um, and it, like, like, it just enrages me. What this is coming, because this was going to be my beautiful dream of discussing these amazing clips. <laughs> anyway. Take, let's do it you next week. Bye. Beep! <laughs> 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 <laughs>